I just have a few disclaimers before we get started. It may be tempting to skip these, but all comments are being held for review on this video, so it's probably a good idea to listen so you'll survive when I delete the ones that do not spark joy. First of all, a quick reminder that this is a satire video, meaning that nothing inside it is supposed to be taken seriously. This also means that often I will exaggerate some things, act confused, or leave out information. I promise you I have read the whole series, I'm just doing it for comedic effect. Also, I see a lot of people yelling at me about how the video isn't funny, in which case I will direct you to a really cool life hack. If you don't like something, you can actually stop watching it. Imagine that. On that note, there have been a lot of summary videos now, which means that I'm not doing any character that I've already done. This includes, but is not limited to, characters like Kibli or Ana. Also, I'm not doing Six Claws because I just don't feel like it, and he's honestly pretty boring. Finally, this video will have spoilers for the Wings of Fire series all the way up to Book 10, Darkness of Dragons, so you have been warned. Hey, men's, fems, thems, and toasters. Imagine a place so bloodthirsty and lacking in law enforcement that you have to watch every step you make. When you walk around town, you must keep your secrets close to the chest because one day one of the assassins trying to offer their services will be used on you. You never know if you'll be next because one wrong move and you're gone for good. The tiniest mistake, the tiniest slip up is what the ones who lurk in the shadows are waiting for. The right time to strike until all that is left of you is a dried up husk. I'm talking about the Wings of Fire fandom, but we can discuss the Scorpion Den too, I guess. The Scorpion Den is a large section of the Sandwing Kingdom that is marked very subtly by this humongous scorpion on the official map. Its main purpose in the first five books was plot development. Sorry, I meant to be a place the dragons could escape from the war. Some are refugees, some are hybrids, and some got lost and wandered in because they needed a vanilla frappuccino. Regardless of how they got there, it's a safe haven for many and a great place for criminals to sort of just hang out. Before the fifth book called on her from the heavens and decided she was useful to the story, Thorn was the leader of the Outclaws, a group of dragons that are mostly just there to claim the water and pretend like they're actually doing something important. While the Outclaws are out there putting on a fashion show, Thorn's idea of a pastime is searching for her lost daughter and looking at pictures of her husband and friend, and seeing if she can burn them with just her eyes. Luckily, once her daughter Sunny comes along and starts the plot, she becomes queen and is magically nice instead of a crime boss that was controlling the majority of a city run by criminals. This is fine. Once Thorn leaves to go follow her true destiny as an alicorn princess, an old guy named after a bird that pees on itself to cool down takes over. Okay, I just googled it, and only turkey vultures do that, but close enough. It, it's vulture. It, it's vulture, that was, that was the joke. Anyway, Vulture is the slimy sandwing that has his own personal mafia, and now that Thorn left the scorpion den unprotected, Vulture has room to perform checkmate and slide into the DMs of the Sandwing Kingdom. He wreaks havoc a bit and spreads a lot of rumors for a while, but once Kibley runs after his Nightwing girlfriend, we don't see much of him till the end of Book 10, where he shows up, gets made into a puppet by Darkstalker, and disappears. No one really knows where he is now, but I wouldn't be surprised if he's busy convincing another child to do his dirty work for him. Speaking of children, Vulture had a kid for some reason, and her name is Cobra. Her name is pretty fitting, considering she likes to lash out at literally anyone she finds threatening, and also she likes poison. Just really, really likes poison. She's a trained assassin, and while she isn't quite part of her dad's cult, she might as well be, considering she jumped into a pit just for the chance to murder the queen. Cobra also comes with a big dose of vitamin neglect, since she doesn't care about any of her three children. Down with the monarchy, she cries, attempting to trick her son into thinking she actually cares about him. Unfortunately for her, Kibli comes double stuffed with plot convenient intelligence, so he figures it out almost immediately. Rattlesnake is one of the forgettable dragons that can only be remembered as one of Kibli's siblings, and also happens to have one of the most common Sandwing names in existence. Her personality is honestly pretty good, which makes it even worse that she has such a small role in the story compared to Smart Freckle Boy. It's probably for the best though, considering her life goals only involve taking over her father's legacy and being the toughest girl boss there ever was. Sirocco is so incredibly useless that I actually forgot 
forgot he existed until I looked up the scorpion dead on the wiki to make sure I wasn't missing anyone. He's dumber than the average YouTube comment section, and most of his lines consist of less than five words. If he were an assassin, you'd be walking alone at night, and then just hear rustle in the bushes as his cloak that he put on backwards gets stuck on a branch. I'm fairly certain that the only reason Rattlesnake spends any time around him is that she looks twice as smart in comparison whenever he stands within five feet of her. You've gotten to the end of the video, which means you either liked it, or you were just watching it so you could nitpick every detail. Either way, thanks for the views, I guess. If you hated it, feel free to leave a comment about how much I suck so that my video still wins the YouTube algorithm. That's all for now, and Ultimate out.